Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have something which is called Garrison Brothers. Yay! Small batch Texan bourbon whiskey, 47% alcohol, 94 proof, certified Texas whiskey. And on the side it says I have bottle number 32942 and the relay date was 2021. This is fall 2021. I have no idea how it made its way over here to Germany so quickly. I'm amazed to be honest. So it is three years old, yay. And it is here made from food grade number one, white corn from the farms in South Texas. Very good. I paid 127 euros 50 for a 47 um, percent or 94 proof um, whiskey bottle over here. When you go Google and you Google Garrison Brothers Texas Bourbon 2021, you get cowboy bourbon. Unfortunately, we don't get cowboy bourbon over here very often in Europe. Um, I don't think you get cowboy bourbon anywhere outside of high Texas there. Um, but that's that. So I really thought about what I could compare this with. Um, from the color, it was going to be here Woodford Reserve double oaked. Um, but then I tried it and it was like, nope, not gonna happen. Then I was thinking about, hey, why don't I just go for a Johnny Drum private stock? Um, almost 50%, um, very difficult, at least over here in Europe at the moment to get and so on. Um, no. So, <laughs> so what did I do? I went for something from Texas. I went for Lone Elm. So Lone Elm is actually also from the same importer here in Germany. It's called Mike's Whiskey Shop in Munich. So this is um, around 80 euros for the 45%. This is 127 euros, so basically 50% more. And um, there is a big difference here. Both of these things are baked in the Texas sun. And um, they use 50 liter barrels. Um, by the way, when 2009, the um, the proposal was there to only use 50 um, gallon barrels. Garrison Brothers, um, you can see a picture of the guy himself here. Um, Dan <coughs> wrote an open letter here to um, the TBB and he asked, please don't put me out of business. <laughs> because he said, my whiskey tastes like everyone else's whiskey. Don't think so, but hey, all right. So he's famous for using the 50 liter barrels. By the way, over here in Germany, those 50 liter garrison barrels are one of the most sought after barrels to use to actually mature German and other whiskeys in there. So I know people also in other countries are really, really looking for their garrison barrels um, because of the 50 um, liter size as well as the baked properties of these casts from being in... 40 degree Celsius heat, 130 degree plus heat. Um, that really makes for a very, very nice finishing barrels. All right, so Lone Elm is um, more of a 50 gallon barrel and they use wheat and not here number one white corn. Yeah, Texas is doing some very, very great stuff, to be very honest. What I thought was interesting, there was the Bastard Balds, and just um, a couple weeks ago um, on the Whiskey Tribe channel, they actually had the distillers revealing their favorite bottles, and many of the people down there actually like Colorado whiskey now. So maybe the next hot big thing is not just um, Stranahan's, but also... Um, what was it called? Alua? Is that right? Um, that was something which I had never, ever heard of. And it's like, uh, okay, I don't know what's going on here. But yeah, we can we can think about that. Um, <laughs> and so on. So what was this here? I'm going to take a look myself one more time. And um, do they have it listed who they are here? Nope, they don't. So they have here... Um, the guy is here, Robert. So, Robert uh, Segrist, and he is from the, wow, it wasn't even there long enough. He is from the, Talnua Distillery something I've never heard of. All right, I'm going to have to take a look at the Taunua distillery here. Um, so see if we can do something about getting some bottles over here to Germany as well. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so nosing these. 
I have figured something out which I did not know originally. Um, the first time I tried uh, Garrison Brothers, there was a little bit of something that really didn't tickle my fancy, and that is the fact that they're over-oaked, in my opinion. Now, I'm so sorry here to um, Dan Garrison. You must love your oak. Um, even the cowboy bourbon is very, very oak forward. Some people like it. Some people don't. And I apparently am on, um, this is my favorite um, Woodford Reserve, double oak. Um, I like a lot of oak, but I don't like too much oak. And it's really interesting where different people have their thresholds. And this just goes over the overboard for me. All right. So sorry, sorry, sorry. I get a lot of, I called it, imagine I'm in the, I'm in Great Britain, I'm in England someplace, and I'm doing Airbnb, and I'm in this nice little home with this old lady, and it's like a grandmother, and she has her toast, and um, the old people in, um, in, in, in England did not have a toaster where you push it down and both sides at the same time, they would actually have a thing that they laid the toast on the one side, and they'd pull it out and turn it over and put it on the other side and toast from the other side as well old-fashioned and she left it in there too long and then she took molasses the molasses has a little bit of that burnt character in there and put it on that half burnt toast um it's not burnt burnt toast it's not black black but it's dark brown where my taste buds go oh it's a little bit over toasted that's what i'm getting here i'm getting a molasses as a little bit over toasted with a um a piece of toast that is also over toasted um that's the best way I can describe what's going on here, as that Texas heat cooked those um, Texas barrels, and they actually themselves talk about cooking those barrels. Over here, I don't have that. I do have a beautiful, beautiful caramel, um, almost into a butterscotch, that weeded. I'm not a big fan of weeded whiskeys. For some, for some reason, the Lone Elm, I just enjoy and love a lot. Um, and it's there. Um, there's a little bit of a cooked moment there, but it didn't, it didn't hit that tipping point yet. Huh. All right, so if you can go find the old um, the Lone Elm, go for it. Um, Texas whiskey, very, very good. Uh, Garrison, Air, Garrison Brothers. There's a big, big, big community following out there that love that whiskey. Apparently, I'm not part of it yet. Cheers. Mm -hmm. A lot of oak, too much oak. I've mentioned the word oak, I think, a lot this time. Um, wow. That was a little bit of bitterness, tartness towards the end here. Um, question of the day, what is your whiskey that has the most over oakiness to it? I know Glenn Alache experimented with their Virgin Oak series. There was um, Chincapin, there was French Oak and Spanish Oak. None of those were my fans. Um, Garrison Brothers, way up there with their oakiness that involved in it. There have been some other whiskeys that really, really have tipped the scale towards the oak and um, have not been my friends from Germany. Um, what did I want to mention here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the price, the price, the price, 127 euros. You take 127, you divide it by three. It's three-year-old whiskey, all right? So you're getting over 20-some euros per year. That's just almost unbelievable. I yell at people that say, hey, 20, 10 euros per year for a whiskey might be okay. That's yeah, 200 euros and it's 20 um, years old. Maybe we can buy it. But it's like even at a 20, it's a three-year-old whiskey. That's 60. And this is 127. Wow. Now, I have no idea what you're paying in the States for this at the moment. Um, that's the price we're paying over here in Germany for it. Now, the, the um, tariffs have just been repealed. The question is, will that happen on the 5th of November or will it actually happen on the 1st of January? Some of the experts are still kind of figuring that out. When do are they suspended? Is it immediately or is it then to the first of the year? Um, and so there was definitely still the 25% tariffs on this. So even if you take off that 25, it's still 100, 100 euros and it's a lot, but um, not my cup of tea. All right, so I'm going to give this whiskey a C- in my book for what I'm tasting here, and the value for money is an F. So sorry. So sorry. 
Do not, at least over here in Germany, unless you're really a fan of um, Garrison Brothers, you know what it is, you want to have it on your shelf, you want to enjoy it, um, do not go out and go buy a, a bottle of Garrison Brothers blind and say, hey, it must be the best stuff in the world. It's, it's, it's expensive. If you like chewing on a pop of sickle stick, if you like that oaky, oaky, oakiness, yeah, go for it. If you want something a little bit more um, exotic, a little bit more complex, in my opinion, Go over here to the Lone Elm. Mmm. Mmm. Some caramel. Um, there's some interesting herbal herb, um, so herbs in there. Mmm. Very, very nice. Like. So, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American. If you have not had an over-oaked whiskey, don't worry. Um, you can also tell me in the comments below what is your favorite Texas whiskey. All right, so I just love it that they actually have the certified Texas whiskey symbol. They have the Texas whiskey trail. Um, they have the Texas whiskey association. Um, this bottle is a little bit older. We don't have that symbol on here, but we will one day. Um, very, very good. I love what's happening down in Texas, and I hope other states, Colorado, for example, will follow. Maybe there will be a Colorado whiskey trail. Maybe there will be a Colorado whiskey association. Might be there. I don't know. Maybe there will actually be a certified um, Colorado whiskey um, certificate there. Wouldn't that be nice? I think that's actually a good thing. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for sharing maybe with others, even though I'm not particularly fond of that one, but I am of this one. I do love what's happening down there in Texas and hope to be back 2022 and go visit my, my relatives in Texas. That'd be great. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.